Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and welcome to a tutorial on easy mode C++. One of those things that when you're working with C++ is getting uh, libraries linked in, getting your dependencies all resolved is one of the biggest nightmares new users are going to run into. And today I'm going to look at the easiest way, at least for Windows developers, but this applies for Mac and Linux users as well, to kind of get around this. And this was going to start life as a VCP KG or VC package tutorial and, and it kind of grew beyond that. So the first part of this, we're going to look at setting up VC package, which is a package manager Microsoft ma uh, release that make the process of C++ dependency resolution so much easier. And then in the second half of this video, we're actually going to look at setting up a full development environment using Visual Studio Code. So the first half using Visual Studio, second half using Visual Studio Code. So the first part, we're going to start with VC package. Now VC pay P KG, that's harder to say than you think, um, is made by Microsoft, completely open source. It is a package manager. There's all kinds of these in the world of Linux. When it comes to Windows developers, this is a bit of a life changer. It makes handling and installing stuff really easy. Now you're gonna notice, I have a step-by-step -step guide that will walk you through the entire process. So if you missed something in this video, don't worry, a linked version on Game From Scratch walks through everything we are going to cover in the video. So don't worry if you missed something. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is get our development environment set up. You're still gonna need a compiler behind the scenes. That is the package that makes C++ do its thing. Now, there are a couple of other options. You could do something like MingW, which is a free open source tool chain based off of G++ or GCC, uh, but that's not what I'm gonna cover here. I'm gonna be either looking at Visual Studio 2019, which by the way, a community version is available completely free. As long as you make something like less than a million bucks, you can go ahead and use Visual Studio 2019. Um, but you can also go ahead and do this with Microsoft C++ build tools. Uh, the process is pretty much the same, uh, but there are some dependencies, some things you want to make sure you install either way, whichever package you're going with, um, uh, I'll show you what you need to install. Then, of course, we're going to need the VC package management package itself is available up on GitHub. Uh, if you want, you'll be using this one later on and come in here and you can copy that Git package address as well. You're also going to want to make sure that you have Git installed. That's easy enough to check. Basically, Go here, if you get an error message, you don't have Git installed or you have Git installed, but it's not configured to be in your path. I'm not gonna cover that process, so uh, there's all kinds of videos that can walk you through getting up and running with Git. So make sure, if you haven't gotten Git, go get Git now, and I really wanted to say that. All right, so that is it. You're gonna need one of these packages and then you're gonna need to grab this VC package. But first you're going to, before you do any of this, you're gonna make sure that you have your C++ tool chain installed. So either install build tools, or the full fat Visual Studio 2019. In all honesty, if you're just starting out with C++, especially if you're using VC package, the easy route is to go with full Visual Studio community. It's just know that it's gonna take 10 to 15 gigs of your drive up at the minimum. But once you've got it installed, either way, whichever way you go, what you're gonna to wanna to make sure is you have the desktop development with C++ profile enabled, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the build tools for x64 and x86 build tools right there. So that's pretty much the compilers and libraries and everything you need. That's the biggest one you're gonna to need to have. And you're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the Windows 10 SDK. There's gonna be a number of different versions of this you'll see right there. For some reason I have three installed, I don't understand why, but make sure you have one of them installed at the very least, hopefully one of the newer ones. And you may optionally wanna go in here and install C++ CMake tools as well. CMake is a growing more and more and more popular make build system. And we're gonna be using that on the uh, other side of things, but you don't actually need to install those tools to work with Visual Studio Code and CMake, by the way. But make sure that that is set up either if you're using build tools or Visual Studio or Visual C++ itself. Those are the things that at a minimum you need to have installed. All right, so once we've got that done, it is time to get going. So first thing we're going to need to do is open up a command prompt. One of the commands that we're going to do when we actually integrate uh, VC package with uh, Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code when we register it. I believe that requires um, administrative permissions. So what we're going to do is hit Windows key and X and then locate Windows PowerShell admin. You can also do this by going to control, um, so command prompt, right clicking it and running it as administrator. Ooh, look, that's not good. All right, anyways, let's just clear that out. And now I'll go full screen on this guy. Be right back. All right, let me zoom this in so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, 
So now what we're gonna need to do is go ahead and download VC Packer. So this is actually brought in using Git, so you're gonna have to keep this somewhere. I have a dev folder, but do keep in mind, whatever we're gonna clone it down, it is going to persist there. It's going to install things there. So that is the install directory where VC Package is going to persist. So make sure that it is somewhere that makes sense to you, that you're not gonna to wanna to delete it later. Also, I would recommend keeping it out of a system folder, such as uh, program files or system or Windows, those kind of things, because you might run into permissions issue and that just makes your life hell. So once we're here, once you've got the directory that you want to install this into, keep in mind this is going to create another directory for you. Come in here and go HTTPS colon, so github.com forward slash Microsoft forward slash VC package. All right, so what this is going to do is go and clone and download all of the bits of VC package that we need. So once this is done, we've got a couple of steps to do. This doesn't take a whole lot of time, so I'll just leave this to run. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so it is done, and this will have created a folder called VC package. Now, if you want to, what you can do is actually um, set that into your path. It'll save you from having to type out all these VC package commands later on. But first, now we need to do an install process. So we'll just go into that folder and type bootstrap VC package like so. Uh, you're gonna notice since I'm in PowerShell, when I hit bootstrap tab, it automatically fills into the dot slash, slightly different format for running an executable. And really just run that batch file this is gonna go ahead and compile VC package. So if you didn't do the previous process, if you didn't set it up so that uh, your build tools are all there, uh, you're probably not having a great time right now. So this is why you had to install uh, Visual Studio or build tools before we got to this point. And this is gonna take a little bit of time. So, oh wait, whoa. All right, so we'll let this uh, run and I will unpause it when it's done. Okay, we're at the end. One thing to actually notice here is if you want telemetry trees removed, if you don't want Microsoft spying on you, uh, pass in the dash dash disable metrics command when you run that. I actually forgot to do that, but it's one of those things to be aware of. And when it's done, it should all be good to go. So now if you come in here and you look at the, all right, here we go, look at that directory. Why are you not scrolling right? You see here, we now have VC package in here and we are good to go. Now we're gonna do that thing that required um, the administrative process of VC and then I'll hit tab, so like that. Uh, we wanna go and integrate and install. And I do believe again, this requires you to have had administrative access enabled. So that is key. The other thing here is look at this guy right here. All right, you're gonna probably wanna copy and paste that somewhere uh, because we are going to be, why are you? It's being really stupid to scroll off screen. You're gonna wanna grab that whole line right there because we're gonna be using this in just a few minutes, specifically this part when we configure Visual Studio Code. So either copy that down into Notepad somewhere or just hold it in your memory because this is an important thing we're gonna use a couple of times. All right, so we now have VC Package Manager installed. Now I'm gonna show you why this thing really kind of rocks. So since we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and, oops, do a VC package command, and you've got all kinds of things you could do here, but the biggest thing that you're normally going to be doing is searching for and installing packages. So there's something like 1,300 packages that Microsoft curate and manage, and they also test to see that these packages work with each other. So if you need to install something, you can get it this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to install, or I'm gonna search, I believe it's search, for Raylib. So boom, there it is. So what we found, we found two libraries of type Raylib. Same time, let's say I wanted to find a URL handling software. I just come in here to a URL, and there you go. We've got a number of different options. Uh, curl is a very popular one. We could go ahead and install any of this stuff that way. I'm gonna just go ahead now again, VC package like so, and they'll do an install, and we can install Raylib. Now, well, another thing you might wanna do is install a very specific version of it, and we can do that with a colon, and then we could do, uh, say, x86 Windows like so, or x64-windows, like so. Or if you don't know, you can just come in here and put gibberish, and it will actually tell you what the possible triplets are. So here's all the various different built-in ones, like so, and then the community-provided ones. So if you're building for iOS or UWP or uh, static typing or the Mingw compiler or whatever, you may have an option available there, but these are the ones you're generally going to use. So let's do this one for 64-bit. So once again, same command. So we go VC package, install Raylib x64 dash windows. And what this is going to do is go ahead and find that package, all of its dependencies, pull them all down and compile them for you. And this is going to make your life 
so much better than if you had to do this yourself. And you can do this exact same process. SDL is in there. SFML is in there. It doesn't work for a damn, but it's there. Uh, you saw curl is there. We got Zlip compression libraries. Basically, anything that's open source is probably accessible via VC packaging. So if you wanted to grab one of these things, and what this is doing is basically pulling it down and making it available. Since we did that install, that integrate install thing too, when we load up Visual Studio in just a second, it's going to have full support for this thing. And it's going to be really, really easy. If you've ever done any, um, a, you know, C++ linkage stuff, you know that this is normally a pain in the butt process. You got to come in here and go, all right, I want it to build for 32 or 64 bit debug or release uh, static or multi-thread or dynamic or so on. And then you go, oh, this one is dependent on this library. Oh, okay, I'll go get it first. And then about nine hours and 18 thousand pages of googling later you may have kind of given up at this point who knows so here we go we now have raylib available it's telling us a little bit of um cmake oriented code that you can use to to uh, find this package but i'm going to take a slightly simpler simpler approach overall with how we handle it so now we're ready to use raylib and at the same time it could have been anything we could have done the same thing uh for example if i do a uh, search for sdl2 Boom, there is all the various different SDL options and builds. You can pull down complete independent parts of it, whatever. And then you can do the install for that as well. Anything you wanna pull down, it will automatically resolve all the dependencies and build it for you. And then what it's done is it's opened up here. So here is your VC package folder that we installed into just a second ago. And you're gonna see here there's, oops, installed. And you see here the build targets. And there are the include files you need. There are the library files you need, and there are the DLL files you need. So it pulls in and builds everything for you. We're gonna shortcut to this package in a little bit, but first we're gonna show you the Visual Studio process. So Visual Studio, let's go fire that guy up right now, and we'll start with it. So we're gonna make a very simple Raylib project. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get up and going. Actually, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go here and say a new project. Da, da, da. So this is a console app C++. So let's switch here to C++ and make a console app. Okay, like so, sure, sure. All right, so let's go ahead and create that file right now. And normally what you would have to do at this point, once your project is, is done and ready to go, is we'd have to configure it. So we'd have to come in here and go, okay, properties, I'm not gonna go through this whole process, but what you generally have to do is come in through the C++ and you, set up, you tell it where your include files are gonna be located. And then you have to come into the linker and you're gonna to have to tell it what additional uh, files to include, additional dependencies, all the lib files you're dependent on and so on. Well, in this case, since we've already got Raylib installed, let's look at getting Raylib configured now that we've got VC Package Manager installed. So go back, uh, here, let me just fire up a new browser. Like so, bring that over here, okay. So first things first, let's go find a Raylib hello world example. All right. So let's grab a very simple example. Normally what you do when you're working with another project like this, it's a complete pain in the butt because you've got to go ahead and get all those things configured. All I'm doing is I'm copying and pasting their default code right here into our project like so. There we go. Ooh, zoomed the wrong way. So you guys, very simple Raylib example. It's got to find the raylib.header. Go ahead and build that. And you may notice, oh, wait a minute, can't find raylib.h. I thought this was the entire point you were talking about. You wouldn't have to set this crap up. And yes, that is true. Unfortunately, when you first run Visual C++ for some reason, it always defaults to an x86 project. Now, if, when I installed this stuff, I installed the x86 Windows version instead of the x64 Windows version, we'd be good to go. But don't worry, this isn't hard. All you have to do it switched to X64. And you'll notice, boom, everything is working. There is no squiggly underline. That is all you need to do to get a package to work. And if you wanna add another package in, simply install it, include it in, and you're good to go. No setting up headers, no setting up library linkage, no working on the dependencies that are involved, no having to copy the DLLs over, that is it. If you are working in Visual Studio 2019, quite literally, all you need to do is switch your project build type so it matches your install type. So again, when you installed this guy, when you did the VC package install, 
make sure that the version you pass in is the version that you want. It's going to basically be x86 or x64 99 times out of 100. But if it doesn't match up, it won't find it and it won't work. So that is it. Visual Studio, you are done. We can go ahead, hit Control, Shift, B. There we ran it. We'll go ahead and uh, I think that was F5. No, that was F6. Let's go ahead and run it. And here you can see our application running and happy. That's it. That, that is all that you need to do if you are using Visual Studio 2019. And like I said, if you're just starting out, I highly, highly recommend you start with Visual Studio 2019. Yes, it's going to be a bit of an install for sure, and there's a bit of a learning curve with Visual Studio itself, but the VC package process just works so much easier. But now it's time to go and look at the Visual Studio code side of things. So naturally, the first thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and download Visual Studio Code. The cool thing about Visual Studio Code is it's available Windows, Mac, and Linux. Of course, this tutorial is 100% Windows focused, but uh, it's available at code.visualstudio.com. I will, of course, link that in the linked article as well. Just go ahead and download. It's a really small install, and once you are done, it will look somewhat like this. I, I did pretty much the default settings here, and what you'll notice that you need to do right away is install a couple of extensions. Now, it doesn't say you need to restart between installing these, but I think it goes a little flaky if you don't. So I do one install, restart, next install, and then I start from there. So first thing we're going to do is install the C++ tools. It may not be immediately there for you, so just come up here, do a search for C++, like so, and it's this one right here. It's the one made by Microsoft, and this one basically gives you the ability to, well, work with C++. It's got a debugger in there, IntelliSense support, uh, code formatting, code handling tools, and all that stuff are available here. So let's just let that install happen. And then once it is done and happy to go, again, it's probably paranoia on my behalf. Probably don't have to stop it, but I do. And then fire up another copy of Visual Studio Code, go over here, and go to the extensions once again. You will notice you have one here. It's the C, C++ that we just installed. And now we need to add one more. That's the CMake tool. So just search for the word CMake and you want CMake tools. It's the one, it's got a, an official asterisk at the top. Again, this one is provided by Microsoft. Just go ahead and install that one as well. This gives you CMake build support and it is done. Now, when it first finishes running, it should go and configure itself. Try to run things. Hopefully this doesn't freeze up. So let this run for a second. Let's see what it does here. So you make unconfigured loading. Click to select the current build. There are no current build kits yet because we need to add a new kit. So we can do here, click the no kit selected. Yeah, okay, it's being stupid again. Now this is partially because I'm running it on my own um, install here that I've, I kind of had it running before and I've cleaned things out. So you shouldn't encounter this your first run through. I should just be able to click there, but come on, come on. All right, so what I'm going to do, so I'm going to shut down Visual Studio and we're gonna start a new project. So we're gonna come in here, fire up a command prompt. So, and of course, temporary directory. We'll make a new directory called, I don't know, YouTube demo, CD YouTube demo like so and we we'll just do code and then a dot to open that current folder this is going to open that folder up and now what we want to do is run cmake so cmake should be up and config oh it hasn't been configured we're going to run through that in this process what we have to do now is trigger the uh command palette now this can be done using Control shift and p you do this all the time in visual studio code you can also do the same thing by hitting just f1 and you'll notice here what i want to do is type the word cmake and we can do a quick start. Or we can actually do configure and that should fire off all the stuff that didn't work before. So do a configure if it just kind of froze up for like what you saw. And this will do a scan basically for all of the compatible compilers on your system. In my case, it's found Visual Studio Community 2019. In your case, it may actually find um, um, it build tools if that's what you installed instead and it may also pick up other compilers so you see here it's picking up the ming w that's installed on my computer here all right so we've got configuring working just fine you can pick the version you want here but what i'm going to do instead is do an f1 i'm going to go c make quick start and what this will do is create a project for us so start there and now what we want to do is pick the version of the compiler we're working with. Again, this is just like when we were using Visual Studio earlier. You want to pick either AMD64 or the x86. This one right here or this one right here. You're going to want to have it match whichever version you installed uh, using VC package from the command line. So again, we're going with AMD64 and I'll call this demo. 
and it is an executable. So we'll click there and let that go ahead and run. So you see here, it's AMD 64. Uh, let it do its configuration, etc. By the way, if you ever want to, uh, you can change that value. You can basically just click on down here and switch to uh, the different build platform that you wish. It's a quick shortcut available right here. It's the same thing as doing the configure. So let this guy run. What it's going to do, it created a, a very simple make file, a C make file. This is a way of telling uh, what parts you're going to need to build your project, etc. It's it's basically the project format. And at this point in time, so it's going to say, yeah. In configure IntelliSense, we'll let that little wizard run. And okay. In my case, it's doing an upload. So we'll, we'll let it do an update, restart the browser, and we're fine. Okay, so here we are. We are in our project. Um, there's a couple things here we don't really need. We don't need this testing framework stuff in the CMake that it built for us. So we'll just get rid of everything. So we have one of the simplest CMakes you've got. We declare it's the CMake project. We give it a name. Again, the name is important. And we say, that that name, and here's the entry point for that name. See over here, we've got our source code, pretty simple and straightforward. Now, unfortunately, there is a bit more involved in making it work on Visual Studio Code than there is in Visual Studio C++ or Visual Studio 2019, like we showed in the earlier part of the demo. So let's get through that right now. First thing we're gonna need to do is go ahead and do a configuration. So come in here and type workspace and say open workspace settings. And it'll just come up with a bunch of options here, including if you come down here to extensions, you can see here CMake tools and we can drill down and find the one we are looking for. Uh, but ultimately it's not here. It's going to be in edit.settings. But instead what we can do is click this guy right here and it will open up over here. Now what we're gonna have to do is remember way, way back, I said there was that thing that's gonna be important later. Well, it's important now. Uh, so here is where we set up uh, one second. Da, 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 da. All right. So what I want to do is add a C make dot configure settings. It'll be available right down there. So we're setting this up. You have to do this once per project. Um, and we're basically just telling it C make where it can find the uh, VC package stuff like so. VC make tool chain file and then open over here. And now C colons, why did you end up up there? All right, C colon and then forward slash dev forward slash VC package forward slash scripts forward slash build systems forward slash VC package that make. Now that, again, that entire path was given to you when we did the integrate command earlier on. Uh, so that's what you were copying it down for. Notice we're doing the slashes that way in the editor, uh, because if you use something this way, it's an escape code. So you either have to do a double slash like this, or instead of a normal slash, you do a slash in the backwards path. So here we go. We've just configured it. The only thing I need to do here is add a comma on that line so that actually works. And there you go. So our settings are now configured. Don't worry. You really literally just have to do this kind of thing once and you are good to go. All right. So our settings are there. It can now find uh, the CMake tool chain. And that is definitely a nice thing. And now we need to go ahead. We've done our quick start. We configured our project and we're, we're pretty much ready to build our project now, to be honest. So we come back on over. So we got main.cpp. And then we're going to go ahead. You can do an F7, but also you'll notice again, F1, CMake and what you want is build. So right here, again, F7 would do that as well. It's just gonna run it. There's your code. And da, 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 let it run. It compiled C, uh, our main.cpp and we are ready to go. Now what we wanna probably do is run that guy. Now the, co the important thing here, you can see the directory of what it just built is available right there. See it's under build, debug, and it's called demo.exe. We're just gonna take that right there because we're gonna need that in just a second. And now we're going to go, we can do a run and we can do a start and it's not going to find anything. So now we're configuring this again. You only have to do this once. Come in here, go C++ for Windows, do a default configuration and it opens this guy right up here. So what we're going to do is just enter into the program. You can put the entire path in here or we can do some short codes. So like there, like that. And again, we want that part right there. So slash build slash debug slash demo dot exe. Okay, so now we can find your code. We should be able to go ahead and save that one. And go back over here and do a run again, or you hit F5 and then boom, your code is now running. 
There it is. The output right there is hello world. So we're, we're most of the way there. We just created our first uh, C++ project in Visual Studio Code and successfully ran it within Visual Studio Code. So everything is coming up cherry. So now let's go ahead and let's find that package we were looking at earlier on. So let me just minimize that. So Raylib here, go back to the examples and grab this guy here and let's drop in our source code. So again, we've already installed these guys. So I should be able to, in theory, just bring this thing in and down. And hopefully in the future, this just works. Right now, unfortunately, it doesn't. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And what we're going to find, well, actually maybe it'll, nope, see, bang, bang. It doesn't automatically find it like we did back in the day when we were working in Visual Studio Complete. So in Visual Studio Code, we have a little bit more setup to do, uh, but the way that I do this, it, it's a bit of a little hacky, but it also is really simple. Because the nice thing is, as I was telling you earlier on, these things all install into that folder underneath um, where you install VC package. So we can take advantage of that fact. And we come up here to the CMake lists file. We're gonna modify this thing just slightly. So we're gonna add a couple of lines here uh, below the project declaration. And we're gonna do a new one, include directories like so. And essentially what you're doing here is telling CMake or the build system where it can find uh, your pound include directories. Now remember earlier I showed you where the um, uh, VC package installed stuff too. So dev VC package installed and then the platform version, you're gonna see there's an include directory and so on. So all we're gonna do is basically add that path right here. Obviously this is gonna change based off where you installed your VC package. So I'm gonna go here. I'm now at the VC package root. And then from there you do installed and then, all right, this sec. Razor blade keyboard is annoying. All right, installed. And then we wanna do x64 windows. Again, that is going to change based off the version you have installed. And you'll be able to tell what you have installed in the installed folder. There's all the various different platforms that are available there. So we wanna do x64, and ultimately we're gonna be using Raylib. So you're gonna see, look, Raylib is installed there. All right, so we're good to go. So now it'll know to look for uh, includes here, okay? So that's the one thing we need to do. The next thing we need to do is the same thing, but for lib files. And we go link directories like so, open that up. And then once again, C dev VC package installed x64 windows and it'll figure out the rest. So that's gonna tell it where it can find include files and where it can find lib files. Now the cool thing is, as you install more versions, they're all going to be in the same spot. Now there's only one last thing we need to do, and that is add this line and add this after you add your executable right here, which will already have been in the pre-made CMake for you. Add the line, target link libraries, and we're gonna say into what? So what we see here, we're called demo. So we're gonna use the name demo. And now what you do is a list of the libraries to install. So in this case, all we're using is Raylib. But if we had SDL, we do SDL2. If we were using curl, we add it to the list and so on. So like so, and done. So what this basically, all we've done here is we've said, use this additional set of include directories, this additional set of library directories, and this location. And the only thing that's going to change is as you add more libraries, if you do a um, VC package install for another platform, you just basically come back here. So if you add a curl, you come back here and add a curl. Now the other thing to watch out for, again, make sure you get your platform right in the directory here. So if you're building for ARM64, you're gonna to wanna to have x64 windows. If you're doing an x86 build, you would do x86 here instead. And if it fails, it's probably because you did the wrong version. And finally, just make sure that your target matches up here. And then you're good to go. Oops, I mean, you're almost good to go. Uh, this is the include directory. So we actually wanna go fully resolve this. We wanna include the include, and then the other one we wanna do lib. So here you go, include here for the libraries, you wanna do lib. All right, and now I mean it for real, you are good to go. So we do an F1, we do a CMake build, or again, hit F7, and it should compile it, work just fine, automatically resolve our pound includes, make everything work, and it does. Our executable is there and running. Hit F5, since we've already defined it, it should just be up and going. And there you go, Raylib is running and running happily. So a quick recap of what you need to do. Uh, go in, add a CMakes list file using the CMake quick start, 
edit it down so you include the include directories. These will be, um, again, off of this part never changes other than the platform part right there. Uh, so either x86 or x64. Uh, and then finally, when you do this, match it to the name of your your executable right there and there and here as you start adding new libraries. So if you installed curl or SDL2 or box2d or whatever, just keep adding them here into this list right there and you should be good to go. Other than that, the only configuration setting you need to do is in the settings for your project. Make sure that this is put in there. And again, when you did your uh, VC package integrate install, it gave you this line right there that you just need to paste in there. And that's set up, once you've done it once, really all you need to do is come back in here and keep adding the, the, the libraries you've installed additionally that you're gonna use in your project. And the rest of the setup is taken care of for you. Again, the Visual Studio way of doing things is a little bit easier, but hopefully in time, the Visual Studio code side of things does improve. I've seen all kinds of instructions on how you can do it this way and that way and this way and that way. They simply don't work. This is the easiest compromise hack version I found out there. Um, and it does seem to work. But if you do have a better way or if it gets fixed and this part becomes redundant, please let me know in the comments down below. But once again, everything we did here is documented here. I will post it. It walks through the exact same process. Everything you needed to do step-by-step step for the install, for configuring Visual Studio Code, for getting VC package running and so on. It's all here with all the links, everything you need is there and it will be linked down below. So hopefully you found that useful. Again, Visual Studio is a tricky thing to get up and running, but VC Package Manager definitely makes the process a bit easier. And if you're watching that and going, that wasn't easy, trust me, compared to the traditional way of getting a library with the multiple sets of dependencies up and running, this is definitely the easy way. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you got any questions, let me know comments down below. And uh, yeah, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.